Gabriel Manilevsky. 20 seconds. Sculpture. 1963. I fixed it, Dad. Gabriel is seven years old when he's walking through the house with fast steps. He holds a little robot he has created in his hand out of tin, nickel batteries, and mechanics. He walks with the robot in front of him, like if his dad already is able to see it. It's almost like an eternal game between them. Gabriel makes his creations, everything from steam machines to an electrical car. And now, the robot he has been working on for two months. He will show it to his daddy, the engineer, that amazed and full with admiration looks at his son's creations, comes with ideas and corrections. This is their connective tissue, a way of getting close to each other, instead of talking. Apart from that, his father Ivan Manolevsky is a silent, stoical man that's more interested in his creations than his little son. When it comes to his mother, the mom who is dead since Gabriel's birth, they never mention her. Sometimes the two creators, the young and the old, Manolevsky call their inventions with her name, but that is all. On the day of the mother's death, they usually go to the graveyard. She should have had twins, but only Gabriel survived. Gabriel tells his mother about everything that happened, about his ideas for the future. Last time he was here, he told her about the robot that he would make, and that he now holds in his hand. This was after his father had shown him his new workplace at Yugo Electronics, where Gabriel got to test the first modern computer of Yugoslavia, driven by whole carts, designed and engineered in parts by his brilliant estranged father. Gabriel had a revelation when he saw it. He saw a short glimpse of the future. He saw himself inside of that mothership. How he figured out how to compress this huge computer that fills the whole floor, and now he puts the little microchip into the head of a beautiful woman. Daddy? The little robot he holds in his sweaty palms has little lamps as eyes. And when you turn it on, it marches forward to make a small lap of honor. Gabriel knows already now how he will mount a small loudspeaker so the robot can speak. He knows, even though it's just a vague vision of the future, that he will make it understand and be able to answer. Tato? Gabriel has been awake all night working with the robot. His little feet run up the stairs to the bedroom where his father sleeps. His dad is lying there, breathing heavily. He moans when Gabriel shakes him. He looks at the old alarm clock. The time is 4.13 in the morning. Don't you ever sleep. But Tato, I finished it. Ivan Manolevsky sits up in the bed and puts his rounded glasses on. He smiles tiredly. Show it to me, then. Ivan says and puts his hand on Gabriel's shoulder. Gabriel smiles. I call it Manobot. Gabriel puts down the little robot on the floor. He feels a shot of adrenaline creep up his spine. He flicks the little switch on the robot's back, and the little lamps for eyes lighten up. Gabriel looks at his father, tries to read him. But the robot does not move. The eyes flicker and it shuts down. But it worked before. Ivan shrugs. It can happen. Gabriel is on his way to the robot to pick it up when it suddenly starts to shake and rattle violently up and down. Ivan looks at Gabriel and smiles to him in a short moment. Now the whole house is shaking, vehemently, with a powerful and violent force. The floor beneath him is shaking. Gabriel gets scared and the tears find their way into his eyes. He doesn't know or understand what's going on, but Ivan knows. It's an earthquake. Ear-splitting sounds from the outside. As if the house is falling apart, the quake shakes everything with its violent force. The work desk Ivan has in his bedroom moves a meter. Behind them, it sounds like the stairs is falling down. Everything from the walls is falling. Insane vertical shakes. Now the house lurches, forth and back. Gabriel picks up the robot. He almost can't keep his balance. Ivan picks up Gabriel on his shoulder, opens the window. The windows rattle. You got to jump! They are on the second floor. Out there, Gabriel sees how the houses around them collapse. The apocalypse. Gabriel shakes his head. I have to get my work! Ivan says and runs towards the study. Tato! In a short moment, Ivan turns around. He smiles in that way people do when they're in shock. Jump before the house collapses! Ivan says and hurries down the hall. Gabriel swallows hard and he feels how the house shakes again. A swell from the tectonic plates shakes his whole body. 
He holds the robot hard, and then he jumps out, down to the garden. The robot falls out of his hands. He lands and twists his ankle. The pain in his foot. He cries. He wonders where Tato is. He turns around and sees their house, how it falls apart. Tato! He runs towards it, but the backdraft in the quake is so big so he falls down. The house collapses totally. Around him, in the distance, hollow sounds of the houses and buildings collapsing, people's desperate screams. It shakes again. He gets up on his feet, limp towards the ruins of the house. There are everything. It shakes again. He gets up on his feet, limp towards the ruins of their house. There are everything. The earth trembles so hard that he falls down again. The earth trembles so hard that he falls down again. Get up! Tato must be somewhere. He begins to dig with his little hands among the ruins. And suddenly, the quake ends. He lifts up a stone and sees Ivan Manalevsky lying there in dust, in debris, squashed, dead. Everything happened in 20 seconds. <laughs>